Okay, now, Paul, I know you had a lot of different things you want to talk about, and I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but I, Alex already said it, so <laughs> there is a, 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 a eugenics uh, aspect to the film where they, uh, they have planned uh, births and so forth. So it, it's all the propaganda coming in there, you know, and guys like Goyer who wrote, uh, I guess, co-wrote Superman. He also wrote, uh, or at least co-wrote The Dark Knight, the Batman movies, and also the video game Black Ops. So the guys are definitely well-informed, well-involved in uh, what's going on in the world. Well, precisely. I mean, they're on the cutting edge, aren't they? Uh, Alex also mentioned the film Elysium, which is, you know, the upcoming dystopic Matt Damon film. And in that, humanity separates into two new class systems. Those who get the cybernetic upgrades, they go and live on an off-planet habitat. And then the rest of humanity is consigned to a dying earth, you know, overpopulated, lack of food, lack of sanitation. So this, this theme runs through a lot of Hollywood blockbusters at the moment because it's also on the cutting edge of science with, uh, you know, people like Ray Kurzweil talking about it, which we can move on to now. Sure. Well, there was this, this Global Futures 2045 conference last weekend in New York. Ray Kurzweil, who of course is an inventor futurist, we spoke about him on the show many times before, he gave another speech in which he basically re-outlined what he first set forth in his book, uh, The Age of Spiritual Machines. Now, for people who haven't read the book, it was written in 1999. He basically predicted almost every technological development from 1999 to 2009. The iPod, Netflix, the Kindle, everything that we now use and take for granted, which was unheard of in 1999, he predicted it. So he's got a quite accurate track record, which is interesting because by 2029, if you read his book, he predicts that humans will have cybernetically augmented their bodies. They're going to have brain interfaces, chips, augmentations that allow them to be smarter, have greater memories, uh, be more immune from disease and so on. But what Kurzweil doesn't admit in his speeches, such as the one that happened last weekend, is the fact that this kind of technology is not going to be available for all of us. It's going to be available for a super elite that uses it to dominate and enslave the rest of the population. And he actually admits it in his own book. Here's a quote. People involved in unskilled labor will become super superfluous when their jobs are replaced by machines, and there is almost no human employment in production, agriculture, and transportation. So the machines are going to come in to replace the workers, the unskilled labor, and then people who either refuse or are incapable of getting the cybernetic implants, the cyborg upgrades, this is what he said about them, quote, humans who do not utilize such implants are unable to meaningly, me meaningfully participate in dialogues with those who do. So he's basically saying, if you don't get the brain chip, if you don't get the cybernetic upgrade, which is going to be consigned to the elite because most of us won't be able to afford it, right. or if we reject it and um, you know, get called neo-Luddites, then we're not going to be meaningfully engaged in society. We're not going to be able to have dialogues with other people, which is kind of like what the modern cell phone is. Uh, if you don't have a cell phone, then you're seen as somehow backward and you can't communicate with people. It's going to be that to an even greater level, but I think more people will resist the cybernetic implants, the upgrades, and it's going to create this, this clash of two classes where the elite goes off and has all these upgrades, life extension technologies, while the rest of us are left to suffer in, you know, the cry freedom ghetto, as it once was described. And, and we this see is all this, uh, not just, no, just to interrupt you briefly, Paul, and we get back to Kurzweil, but we see this uh, recently with the Xbox, uh, I don't want to call it a scandal, but the Xbox, Xbox One, the next generation, where they said that they were going to have to have it plugged into the, uh, the internet 24 hours a day, and it had uh, the retina scanning. The thing was so advanced, you could tell if you were enjoying the game. And we had one of the publishers, I believe it was, for, the, uh, for one of the game companies came out. And he said, well, if you don't like your Xbox being on 24 hours a day and all your information being gathered, well, you can just stay with an Xbox 360. And enough people said, well, we'll just stay with the Xbox 360. Then Microsoft came out and was like, no, 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 go out and buy the Xbox One. So we see when people rise up and they say, we don't want this technology that can actually have a meaningful impact. Well, precisely. I mean, you don't have to go along with it. What they're trying to bring in is the Internet of Things, where 
slavery is sold as convenience. I mean, this is what Petraeus talked about when he said, you know, it's the new cutting edge of clandestine statecraft. They don't need to wiretap anyone if every device in your home is on the internet, is sending messages about you, is exactly. recording you, as with the Xbox. Exactly. No, I didn't mean to interrupt, Paul. Go ahead. Well, yeah, and that's, that's basically what this is all heading towards, is being even more plugged into the matrix. And those who aren't are ostracized from society. I mean, you read the book, and it's quite frankly bizarre. By the end of the book, one of the characters in it who he has a dialogue with has merged with her computer hive mind lover and is having sex with herself in virtual reality. This, this is in Kurzweil's kind of book? That he envisages. That, that's in Spiritual Machines? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. It's absolutely crazy. She dumps this character, Molly, dumps her husband and actually goes off and fornicates with this computer hive mind. And then by the end of the book, Kurzweil wants to get in on the fun as well. So this is a very <laughs> disturbing mind. Uh, there is a real story about some, I guess they do this in Japan, where you can marry like a video game character or like a cartoon character. And there's this guy... He married a, a cartoon character and he had it on his uh, little iPhone or whatever he was. He's like, yeah, this is my wife, Susie, and I don't know how they fornicate or I guess they're married, so they don't fornicate. Uh, but that's we'll talk about all that and a whole lot more on the other side with Paul Joseph Watson. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system. But check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com the clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, Pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Radio Show. Jakari Jackson and Paul Joseph Watson filling in. Now, Paul, I know you have a lot of information to go about, and this is the last segment, so I'm just going to step back, give you the reins, and go over all your information. Well, yeah, we were talking about Ray Kurzweil and his recent prediction, again, that by 2045, humans will upload their minds into computers, and then in the decades following, we will basically dispense with the body altogether. We will become virtual reality avatars, uh, basically, to me, that means a complete spiritual holocaust. You can't survive, the spirit can't survive in a computer program. But that's what he's predicting, and he's been very accurate with his past predictions. As I said before the break, uh, I would question his sanity by the fact that he has a dialogue with this character called Molly in his book, who is living through the different time periods which he forecasts up to 2099. And by the end of it, Molly has dumped her husband. She's merged with a hive mind computer program called George. She has virtual reality sex with this computer program. Um, and basically, the original Molly, her body has been dispensed with. They all merge together. And then by the end of it, Kurzweil himself gets in on the act. It's completely bizarre, but people give this guy credence because he's, he's had accurate predictions. What's frightening about it is those humans who resist this cybernetic upgrade, this merging into the matrix, becoming a virtual real, reality avatar, you know, up, like, uploading your mind to a computer. And remember, Kurzweil is one of the key directors at Google. This is not some ranting lunatic. He's got a position of power now. Um, they quote, in this book, Kurzweil quotes Ted... Kaczynski, the Unabomber, and he's also quoted by Bill Joy in, in the Wired magazine article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us, and they give him credence, despite the fact that he was a terrorist, because he outlined succinctly the dangers posed by this future that Kurzweil and others are predicting, and this is the quote, 
Due to improved techniques, the elite will have greater control over the masses, and because human work will no longer be necessary, the masses will be superfluous, a useless burden on the system. If the elite is ruthless, they may simply decide to exterminate the mass of humanity. If they are humane, they may use propaganda or other psychological or biological techniques to reduce the birth rate until the mass of humanity becomes extinct, leaving the world to the elite. That's what Ted Kaczynski wrote. That's what Kurzweil quotes in his own book as either, either one of those two likely outcomes as a result of this new class system being created by the elite having, having access to the life extension technologies of cybernetic upgrades. So they're basically saying, once the elite are in that position of total technological dominance, we will be superfluous if we don't adopt the same thing. It will be kept from us to begin with. Most people won't be able to do it. So we'll either be sterilized and go out of existence, or they'll just slaughter us straight off the bat. So that's what the futurists are predicting for humanity. I, for one, have no interest in seeing that as the future of the human race, but a lot of influential elitist futurists like Ray Kurzweil do. Yeah, it's a, it's a very scary thing. It's a very creepy thing. You know, it reminds me of that statue you guys saw at Bilderberg, that weird uh, half Terminator looking thing climbing out of the ooze. And, and that's really what they want. And it sounds so sci-fi to anybody, you know, who's new to this information, but this is very much what they want. Briefly, Paul, give me your, your thoughts on Google Glass. Well, again, Google Glass was predicted by Kurzweil in this book in 1999. Eventually, obviously, it's going to be embedded in the eye. It's going to be a contact lens as well. But that is part of this transhumanist move towards cybernetic upgrades. The good news is that businesses across America are already banning it because it's okay, basically Paul. a, a wire. Right, we're, we're close to the close to the end, but I do agree with you on that. InfoWars Nightly News tonight, 7 p.m. Central. I'll be hosting GDR Arnett will be in studio with me. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.